milk thistle. I had a milk thistle. That's milk thistle. Um, they have milky sap. Um, they are rather bitter. They don't taste very nice, actually. But they are edible. Um, they're eaten by peasants in Africa and Asia. And they can be eaten raw or cooked. We have nodding top next. You know it's nodding top because the flowers nod over like that. That's why it's called nodding top. Um, the leaves taste a little bit like carrot, but um, if you eat too many, then you know it gets too. You know, can't eat too many because it, um, the taste becomes unpleasant after a few. But it's okay for a little bit. And you can have them raw or steamed. Sea celery. I couldn't find one today, but I found one the other day. So if you can look at that picture, which is about to come up, that is sea celery, uh, which has a slight celery flavour, and it likes saline areas. And this one I found near a salty mangrove creek. Slender celery is the next one. I of course I couldn't find in my garden. That's slender celery. Except it's like a... I don't know whether it is the ancestor of um, carrot or very closely related, but it has... Um, oh, no, maybe it's not. There's another one called wild carrot anyway. But uh, this one has a similar, similar in flavour to celery and parsley. And it has potential as a culinary herb because it tastes Nice. Well, I think Tim Tim Lowe suggested that anyway. Um, peppercress. I didn't find actually I did find a peppercress, but not exactly the same one as I found the other day. Peppercress. Um, cresses seem to have this sort of funny looking seed pod, um, but different types of leaves. And there's 40 varieties in Australia, um, but the ones you find in an urban area are probably one of about five species. All peppercrush species are said to be edible and they have a peppery taste. And the one that I found, which I may be able to bring up here. Yep, yeah, there we go. Um, I couldn't actually identify the exact species, but this one was kind of peppery and minty and vanilla in it. It's absolutely delicious. I really liked it. Next is Warrigal Greens. I also couldn't find that in my garden down um, the creek the other day. Um, it likes saline soil and it's um, been spread to many countries um, by the seeds floating across the sea. It's quite high in oxalate. Um, as you may know, or my audience certainly will know, um, they've been they're cultivated in, in gardens, particularly they're good for um, this climate because they're fairly hardy. Um, and this one, I, yeah, I found grown by a salty creek bank. The last one that I put in last one that I put in um, the quiches was wild radish which I couldn't find in the garden again but that you can see it's sort of got a radishy sort of shaped leaf. That's the leaf shape of radish. Anyway, and the flowers taste a little bit like broccoli, and the leaves are pungent like like radish. Again, yeah. I'll talk. That was all the weeds in um, I put in the quiche. I'll talk a little bit about lantana because it's such a hated weed and it's so rampant and it's causing so much destruction in um, Australia. Uh, but there are actually some good uses for it. Um, you can eat the fruit, the little berries. Um, they're quite sweet, apparently. I haven't tried them. You can eat them right. Yeah, eat the right ones because the um, green ones might be poisonous. Um, the leaves have been used as sandpaper. And... The stems have been made into toothbrushes in China. Now there's lots of other uh, perfectly edible weeds uh, which I haven't had time to cover. And a couple more.
more I actually found in the garden, which I didn't write anything about, is Amelia, with the little purple flowers. It was edible. And this is um, cider retusa. The leaves are quite, they, they taste quite nice. Um, and they're sort of mucilaginous. And it grows quite a woody bush. This is just one stick, stick of a um, bush that happens to be growing as a weed in our garden. Mm. The nightshade. Believe it or not, the Australian nightshade, you can eat the ripe berries. Well, the ripe ones fall off onto the table. But when they're ripe, they grow um, too much black. Do not try this in the in Europe because I think the European species are likely to be very, very poisonous. But um, the Australian one, you can eat the berries, but not other, any other part of the plant. Um, but also purslane, uh, chickweed, scurvyweed, yellowweed or potato weed. There's um, a lot of other common weeds which are common around this area, which are also edible. Now, lastly, I'll talk about how all this relates to permaculture principles. Um, I could see a lot of parallels between edible weeds and quite a few principles, in including observe and interact. So you observe the weeds and you eat it, obviously. Um, catch and store energy. So instead of let, you know letting them go to waste, you're actually using the energy that the sun has stored in these weeds for something useful. Obtain, obtain a yield. Um, you know, obtain a yield where you wouldn't if you hadn't eaten the weeds. Uh, use and value renewable resources. Obviously, weeds are very renewable. Produce no waste. If you're eating weeds, you're producing less. Um, you have to buy a few fewer um, plants from the supermarket or whatever, so you're producing less waste. Um, use and value diversity. So diversify your diet. Value the marginal. And weeds are certainly one of the most, you know, very, very marginalised, both in terms of um, where they grow. They grow in sort of areas where nobody really, you know, looks after and, you know, also in our minds we sort of, you know, all you know, horrible despise weeds. So start to try and value the weed. Um, multiple functions. So more than one use for something. So with weeds you can both love them and hate them. Um, and multiple elements. Uh, so you can find your food find the food in more than one way. And I don't know quite which um, principle it relates to, but it's another permaculture idea that you turn the problem into the solution. So in terms of um, eating weeds, I think that's very relevant indeed.